Hey guys, we're out in the front yard right now, and we're checking out some fig trees that I have in the ground. Uh, I haven't updated you guys really on these trees in uh, about a year. And if a couple of you have been asking me to, you know, talk about what trees I'm going to be putting in the ground, what trees I currently have, how old they are, you know, what the, what the status is of these trees, I just talk a little bit about them. Um, I'm going to be going way more into detail about the protection of these in a separate video. But I just planted this tree here. It's a Sicilian hardy. Um, I think the real name for this is something else. I've, I'm blanking on the name right now, but my friend Bill, Big Bill in Lancaster, he found this fig, and it's uh, very similar to a hardy Chicago, so it's a hardy Chicago type. But he says it does much better in the cold, in our climate. Uh, it just is a beast. It puts out tons of figs for him. And uh, I'm expecting this tree to do really, really well here in this location. We're right here in the open. We have no protection, no microclimate from anything. My malt's a black. That's what this is here. We're looking at about a four foot tall tree. I air layered uh, two trees off of this. To make copies one I sent to somebody and that's what that was this branch here and this branch here was for myself and uh, you can see that basically the tree has put out plenty of figs uh, with no pinching by the way I had kind of let these guys get in a habit of putting out too many trunks this year which leads to thinner trunks so you can see in here I have a pretty thick trunk on the left pretty thick trunk on the right you know most of these are kind of thick but there's there was two more in addition to what you see and some of these in here are actually kind of thin so there's about three thin ones right here and four thick ones and it was just too many and uh, because of that I kind of gave up on these trees sort of um, didn't really pay, you know give much attention to them but you can see by the end of the season without any pinching this tree is putting out fruit non-stop so this malta black and this here improves celeste have been in the ground for quite a long time now it's been about three years these are my oldest trees and by about year four these trees really start to go nuts um, and i'm expecting uh exactly that i was kind of hoping because this whole area we've been mounding the soil up here um you know, I've added many layers of wood chips to this that is breaking down and you can already see it's it's forming some compost here. But this is really, really thick layer of wood chips. And this was here because I had an excess of wood chips that a neighbor had cut down their tree over here. And I asked the tree guy, hey, can I have your wood chips? Of course. So they gave me all the wood chips and I had nothing to do with them except use this area to pile them up you can see that I've got plenty of rocks under here and this is really helping in addition to mounding up the soil you can see with my more recent planting of mounding up the soil to increase the metabolisms of these plants as well as adding these rocks that actually get quite hot during the day and release that heat at nighttime so uh, that's really what this year I guess with these trees even though I've sort of neglected them and let them do their thing. You can see how many trunks are down here at the base. is is sort of insane, right? They love to just branch out. And uh, if you can control this branching process and keep it to about five or three, really three to five to eight canes or trunks from the base, depending on how, how old your tree is, right? For me, I think these trees being almost four, you know, gonna be in their fourth year next year, I would want to have at least five, but no, really not and many more than five, maybe six. You know, same thing with my Malta Black. Whereas last year, being a two-year-old tree, I thought three canes from the base was a much better uh, thing to have. And then that way they're going to fruit for you every single year rather than you, you know, really having a tree in here in the ground that does nothing but grow. So this tree actually does look like it is fruiting, but not nearly as well as the malta black has and again no pinching has been done to this tree um, it's just an earlier variety here 
and that's kind of the state of this tree is that we've been kind of in a growth period uh, a growing a building year for a lot of my trees even for the ones that are in ground you know I've really been trying to build the soil up higher and get the metabolisms the root mass of these trees higher up so it's kind of like they're in a raised bed it's kind of like they're in a container when they're higher up they're getting just more heat during the day more heat is a higher metabolism is a better performing tree now along here I have many potted trees but these will not be here in fact I've already taken a lot of them out of this area and planted them somewhere like this persimmon tree here that we grafted in the spring this one's called Great Wall so this whole area will be cleared against the house and this is the perfect microclimate for fig trees I don't know why I planted some of these guys in the open what a huge mistake I mean looking back on it there's a lot of things that I did you know starting out that I just don't agree with you know three or four years later it just doesn't it doesn't make a whole lot of sense so along this house, we're going to be putting them in the ground, and I've already got three in the ground that I, we just planted. And it's not really uh, recommended to be planting fig trees, guys, in the fall, here at least. I would totally recommend doing that in a warmer climate, you know, like zone 8 or higher. You know, you could probably get away with it in zone 8. But here in zone 7, it's really not a good idea. But uh, these trees have grown so well in their container, they've kind of hardened off pretty well. You can see this is a Ron de Bordeaux. And we've done the process of exactly what I needed to do that my trees in the front of the house that we just saw, the Malta Black, the Improved Celeste, the other Hardy Chicago type, those trees are going through what I have done already for these trees, is that we have buried them about six inches under the ground but they're about six inches above grade. And I know I did a video on planting fig trees pretty recently, but I don't know how clear I was on that, is that we wanna put them six inches below the surface of the soil, but we also want a lot of the root ball to be above grade. And that's gonna create that mounding process that I was talking about, that higher metabolism, more heat is more figs, less water is less growth, you know, it's really, really important in this climate to be mounding up our figs. I would also do the same thing in Florida or a very rainy place. We want less water, guys. And as you can see, we've just covered this mound. I mean, I, I don't know exactly how tall this mound is, but ideally it should be about a foot high off the ground. And covering the mound with rocks is really going to help it because we need to insulate the soil throughout the wintertime. The roots are not as hardy as the wood. You know, some of the wood on these trees, depending on the variety, is hardy to about zero degrees. Whereas the roots are only hardy to about 20 degrees. So it's important to cover the, the soil with something. In the front, I have wood chips. In the back, we have rocks. And these rocks are really gonna keep the soil here quite warm. And it's gonna be a huge benefit in fact, it's going to keep the base of the fig tree warm as well. So, this here is a Ron de Bordeaux. This here is a Colonel Littman's Black Cross from Just Fruits and Exotics. My friend Big Bill has also had pretty good success with this tree in the ground. So, he, uh, he believes that it's a little hardier uh, than some trees, but it didn't make it through the previous winter for him so what that means is he's kind of hoping for a mild winter with this tree and I think because this is in the prime location of my yard I have a nice microclimate here I have the rocks I'm going to be doing another thing that I'm going to be talking about uh, in, a, in a later video the combination of those three things I think is really going to give this tree an edge and we're going to see some pretty good success out of this variety here I also have LSU Purple, which has proven to be quite hardy, I believe. Um, you know, there's people in my zone, it's not the hardiest of figs, but there are people that have been saying that this one does quite well. So I'm excited to try this. 
I know it's a great fig. I got this from my friend Craig. And um, just very happy to have this variety. Even as a even as a potted plant, it's a good one to have. Um, what else can I show you guys? So I have um, over here a little ruby. And little ruby fruited for me this year. It grows sideways. It's just the weirdest grower. Even in a pot, it was growing sideways. Um, and it does quite well, I think. I think it's quite hardy. So we'll see what happens with this tree uh, this winter time. But it's, again, in a really nice spot. It's, it's even more raised off the ground than these other trees. So it should have a better metabolism. You know, this side of the house doesn't get full sun. We get about six to seven hours. The sun comes over here. You know, sometime around noon, I would, I think, and then it, you know, sets around seven o'clock somewhere over there. So these trees really are only getting about seven hours this time of the year. But that light that they are getting is the warmer part of the year or the warmer part of the day. So it's really intense hot heat, which is exactly what these trees want. So we're gonna go a little bit, a little bit further over here. To another area that is quite open uh, at least in the open you know not protected from the wind not protected really from the cold um, and this is another fig tree planting that I have in the middle we planted Maltese Falcon uh, really not as hardy of a tree as I would have hoped for but this tree we planted in the fall of last year and I'm doing the same thing now with a lot of my trees by planting them in the fall as you see these trees over here against the house. But the difference is this tree is in the ground, uh, in the open. So this one it really just is nowhere gonna do nowhere near as good. And the same thing with this JH Adriatic. This one would be much better off if I hadn't screwed this tree up in the beginning of the year. I tried limiting the canes on this tree to three, or trunks, you know, at the base to three. But in the process of doing that, I ripped up a lot more canes than I had hoped. And I had only this one single cane left. <laughs> and it didn't even look like the one cane was going to make it. So I almost killed the tree. But you can see we here got lots of rocks here. This one is actually quite mounded up quite high. The same thing with my Maltese Falcon. So these trees being such mounded up, they're not getting nearly as much heat as they would if they were in a container or just planted at ground level. Um, this year, I've seen this year as a building year for both of those trees to kind of get the root zones of those plants higher up into that mound. And that's what I did um, at the beginning of this year was adding on lots of compost, lots of rocks to the, uh, to the planting here. Same thing with this hardy Chicago. This guy, planted in the fall came through with absolutely no problems even in the open here in zone seven in the same pretty much microclimate as this as the other two trees this guy came through with almost no damage and the trees grown semi-decently for putting out roughly seven or eight figs you can see some of them back here are, are splitting with all this rain that we've been having and I need to take these off because this will only just attract SWD or bugs. Um, the rain really has not been pleasant in the last week so the quality of this fig I'm about to show you it may just be completely ruined. It is sort of you know the the interior I think may be all right but the exterior is getting mold it's fermenting I'm sure there's some SWD in here but nonetheless it's a very tasty fig. I smelled it and it smelled like it could be alright so I'll come back to this when I'm done the video see if I can salvage some of that fig but uh, that's the planting over here and that's the idea you know of the difference between the in-ground trees and the ones that are protected by a microclimate um, or I should say the ones that are out in the open compared to the ones that are going to be protected by a microclimate and we'll get to see in the future I'll show you guys you know what the difference is at the beginning of the spring next year you know how everything got through the winter time you know we'll get to document this and it's really obvious that uh, anything planted 
up against the house is going to just do so much better. I have so many friends that have trees up against their houses and you know there's no problems with them at all. Um, you know even with the foundation I know a lot of you guys are probably like well what about the foundation? Well the fig tree its roots send out roots horizontally not really down vertically uh, two times the width of the canopy in most cases. So they really put out their roots sideways and they're usually thin fibrous roots and um, they're more like feeder roots to be honest with you. Um, and if they're started from cutting, which all of my trees are, I don't plant any seeds, you know, and then graft onto them. That just doesn't work here. They don't have a tap root. So a tap root would go pretty deep down in the soil, probably mess with the foundation or could mess with the foundation. But let's move on. Uh, here is some trees that I have planted just as cuttings. Uh, we took long, I did a video on this guys, if you want to watch that. The old Italian man's way of propagating fig trees is literally to just, you know, take a branch off off a tree, stick that branch in the ground, and that's exactly what I did with this tree. You can see the uh, the branch here. Bury it as deep as you can. Score the bark. You can watch the video on that. And then this is LSU Tiger. LSU Tiger is actually quite hardy. It's been um, proven now to be quite hardy. I think LSU Purple. Hasn't necessarily been proven yet, but uh, a lot of people are suspecting it is quite hardy. So I've taken a chance on it. But LSU Tiger does really well. Uh, here's Raspberry Latte, and I don't know if I'll leave this tree here. I did the same thing with Raspberry Latte in terms of just planting a cutting. But look how massive this tree is. It's almost five feet tall. I think it is five feet tall, that branch there. And it's got plenty of more branches on the side behind it. Um, what a monster that this tree is in terms of its growth. LSU Tiger is quite a monster as well, but these two are in a nice little area here because these trees that I've, I've put here stay here all winter. Um, you know, these are all my apples, my pears, my stone fruits, my jujubes, my che, my, uh, well, my muscadine grape. I'm probably going to get rid of that. But uh, that's all the real hardy stuff that can survive the wintertime in their pot outside all year round. I did a video on that. But what I do is I'll take some straw and mulch the pots with the straw. And um, I can use that mulch as some sort of an insulator for these, these fig trees. I can even put these potted plants around the trees to help insulate them. So I think these trees, you know, especially the raspberry latte, not really that hardy. You know, LSU Tiger is quite hardy to about, I've read people, uh, you know, having good success. A couple of my friends have had good success at like five degrees Fahrenheit. But the raspberry latte is not as hardy as we would hope. And, um, you know, it usually needs some protection in the wintertime of some kind. So hopefully I can get these pots, maybe just move them over a little bit towards the raspberry latte to protect it. Uh, I may end up doing that. But then back here, we've already gone over this, you know, in previous videos. This was the, tr the planting of uh, my figs that I did in the spring. You can see how large some of these trees are. I think some of them, some of them definitely got hit by some scale. And it was quite dry and hot back in here. This is exactly what I want. Of, out of this microclimate is a dry and hot microclimate to get the metabolism of these trees really going and uh, I've succeeded I really have I think this is probably the best spot in the yard for a lot of my trees a lot of my fig trees and um, I'm gonna be really happy when these guys come out of the wintertime with little to no dieback uh, even varieties like uh, Pastelieri, which is actually quite hardy, Nero 600M, a little lower on the hardiness scale, Preto, a little lower on the hardiness scale, Noir de Barbantane, the same thing, a little lower on the, the hardiness scale. But you can see just how much this tree has grown. It's even put out a fruit for me this year. You can see that there. Italian 258, we can't even really find it anymore, but it is there. And it's really tall. It's the tallest of them. And then next to that, 
behind the tomatoes is a Salavatsky pomegranate, which is uh, probably the hardiest pomegranate in the world. So that's what we have uh, we've done in this little area here. There are more varieties that I'm going to be planting in the ground, guys. Um, and I think I was just put a nice little excerpt at the end of all of the varieties that I would plant in the ground here in zone seven. Um, there's quite a bit, and there's quite a bit that I'm trialing. So, you know, Ron De Bordeaux does really well in the ground, Improved Celeste, Malta Black, Hardy Chicago, all do really well in the ground. They've been proven, but I would like to, with the help of my microclimate, do a little bit more experimenting with some varieties and that's what I'm going to be doing on the side of the house here with seven more trees that I'm going to be putting in the ground. Um, I think Long D Out is going to be one of them, White Triana is going to be one of them, um, Borges Soak Grease we're going to try and see what happens. Blue or Black Celeste is one that people don't really talk about but that's one I'm going to be trialing for sure. Um, you can't go wrong with Pastelieri for sure. Let's see, what else can I say for sure? <laughs> oh, we did forget one tree. We did skip over a tree. But my Taramo Unknown, that Big Bill found in Maryland, I have this guy planted in a raised bed and he fruited for me this year. Uh, I also air layered off a pretty huge tree off of this and it's still huge. Grew really well this year better than any of my other trees uh, there was no scale and the fact that it's planted in a raised bed guys it has a lot more heat and that's why this tree grew and grew and grew it's taller than me you know so this tree is massive and that's exactly what I'm trying to achieve here is to get a lot of growth early in the season to put out a lot of figs and then be able to pinch that you know sometime in June or July to get figs uh, you know, as early as I can off of these in-ground trees. The more heat, the earlier you can pinch, that's for sure. But as I said, guys, I will put up a little bit of an excerpt here right now showing you guys what varieties I would recommend for Zone 7 be planted in the ground. All right, everyone, take care, and I will talk to you all soon.